Hello everyone, uh, here is our lecture on uh, groups of Jews that no longer exist anymore. Uh, none of these groups, none of these five, we're really going to talk about four. You know what a scribe is, um, here, the second one here, but none of these groups survive the destruction of Jerusalem um, and the second temple uh, by the Roman Empire um, following 70 AD. We can talk a little bit more about that when we get to this uh, group on the right here called the Zealots. We'll start with the Pharisees. Um, as it comes from a Greek for separated. Um, the Pharisees were a group of Jews that really um, main proponents of very strict legalistic adherence uh, to the Torah law. All 613 laws. Um, and they really flaunted that devotion that they had to the laws. Um, in all parts of society and culture. They did believe in Nevi'im and Ketuvim as well. So they did subscribe to the notions of um, a life after death, the afterlife with the resurrection, um, of course, free will, the doctrine of free will, angels and demons, um, and oral interpretation um, of the Torah law. Um, how do you apply Torah laws in your life today? So oral interpretation. They fasted regularly. Um, as well, they did tithe um, to the temple. Um, they probably were the largest group of these five, um, hitting maybe 60,000 at their high point. Um, but they were, they just disappeared um, following the destruction of the Roman temple in 70 AD. This is the only group um, of beliefs and doctrines that survives though. So their theology, their beliefs, their practices, and their doctrines do survive. Um, this is where rabbis trace their lineage, their historical lineage, and their position of authority and teaching credibility. Um, they trace that back to the Pharisees. So it has Pharisaic origin, the position of rabbi, the rabbinate. Rabbis don't trace their lineage back to the Sadducees, Essenes, or Zealots. They trace it back to the Pharisees. The scribes were just writers copiers of the sacred texts in Judaism. Um, the Sadducees, I'm not exactly sure where this name comes about, uh, but maybe it comes from Zadok, um, the high priest during King Solomon's reign um, from 960 to 922, at least when Solomon was king. Um, this, These are the definitely the powerful. They had the power um, of the temple the position of high priest, and the whole Sanhedrin, the priestly supreme council, that oversaw all logistical um, material needs of the temple itself. Um, so and since there's money that's you know pouring into the temple with donations and tithing, they were wealthy and aristocratic. They were the party that supported keeping things as they are, maintaining the status quo, if you will. So thus, they actually supported Roman occupation of Jerusalem and Rome being in charge. So if you're not a Sadducee, you probably didn't like the Sadducees <laughs> um, because they were, um, you know, conservative, conserve Rome's power base over Jerusalem, if you will. Um, and they had a lot of power and wealth. They definitely do not survive. Um, their, their power becomes a vacuum. Um, once the temple is toppled and destroyed. There's no longer a Sanhedrin, there's no longer a high priest, there's no longer a temple, there's no longer sacrifices, all of that. That's all gone um, once the temple is gone as well too. The Essenes, um, probably from Syriac into Greek, meaning holy ones, they break away, they leave the temple. The vast majority of the Essenes actually leave, leave Jerusalem and live in um, secluded, um, desert communities. They see the temple as being permanently defiled and desecrated. The Jews are obviously, you know, enraged when Antiochus Epiphanes um, IV um, sacrificed the swine, the pig, the unclean animal, um, and they lead a rebellion under the leadership of the Maccabean brothers, and they win. And then the Maccabean brothers, their family, insert themselves into the position of the high priesthood, and they keep it a dynastic genetic position. So they'll always stay in their family, one son um, taking over his father, 
or an elder or another older brother, you know, perhaps they see that as def some Jews saw that as defiling the temple too. That they saw that the Maccabean brothers had no authority to do that just because they led the rebellion. What gives them the authority to insert their own hereditary bloodline into the position of the high priesthood? So it's not just the, the unclean animal, the blood of the pig that defiles and desecrates the temple. It's Jews doing it themselves. So they leave. The vast majority of them leave and they establish their own breakaway desert monastic communities. Um, their main city is in Qumran. You see that here in the first point is their main desert community. Um, and they write out their teachings and their beliefs about the resurrection, about a dual uh, messiahship. There'll be two messiahs working together. Um, one more of a, a kingly military one and more one of a, a theological one, but working together. Um, and all their worship and ceremonies and laws um, itself. They did separate the sexes and very few of them were married. So they embraced a monastic celibate type of lifestyle. Um, they took no part in any of the um, movements to rebel um, against the Roman Empire but they are slaughtered and destroyed too uh, by the Roman Empire following the uprising, the armed uprising against Rome. Um, so th their cities, including Qumran, are all destroyed, all destroyed. They maybe hit 5,000 at most, at most. But, um, but since they wrote out all their teachings, including some books in the Tanakh and what a Christian calls the Old Testament, and they, you know, preserve them in their caves, in their desert caves communities. This is where we, you know, archaeologists have uncovered these writings. They're called the Dead Sea Scrolls. Some of you maybe have heard of that before. So thanks to the Essenes breaking away from Jerusalem and establishing their own desert enclaves and hiding their writings, their scrolls in jars, alabaster clay jars in caves in the desert, um, this is how the Dead Sea Scrolls were uncovered, because of them, thankfully to them. And then the Zealots, you've heard of zeal and zealousness and all of that. These are the Jews who basically um, came to the conclusion that they as Jews, the chosen blessed people of God and of Israel, the blessed chosen nation of God, should not be under foreign occupation especially by an outside group of people who um an outside group of people like the romans who were polytheistic pagan multiple gods worship the emperor is god on earth all of that um and so they lead these revolts against the roman empire they're going to drive out the roman empire and rule themselves independently under god's rule not under the roman rule um and this is that they were militant they were fighters some embraced um, the fanatical role of an assassin, Sakari, right? This term right here, a dagger yielding assassin. Um, but Rome is not going to let it stand. Rome eventually responds by massacring um, this entire region, totally obliterating the temple and destroying Jerusalem itself. They make a last stand at Masada and they're all wiped out. The city of Masada, they're all wiped out. Many of them jump off cliffs in the desert, in that desert community, thus committing suicide rather than die at the hands of a Roman soldier. None of these groups survive. Rome, the Roman Empire, wipes them all out. But the theology, practices, and beliefs of the Pharisees do survive. Rabbis, the position of the rabbi, the authority of the rabbi, traces its lineage back to the Pharisees. So, all right, those four groups.